Good morning. This is Father Gordon Anderson, rector of St. Albans Anglican Church in Joppa, Maryland. Today I am beginning a new teaching series. We will be getting together on Monday mornings online here on Facebook and then later this will be placed on our YouTube channel to have a brief half hour lesson on some aspect of our faith and worship here at St. Albans Church. It is primarily intended for the people of St. Albans, our members and friends, but all are welcome to join us in this journey. And I do hope that you'll find it informative and edifying. The topic will vary from week to week. This will just be a little something that uh, you will hopefully find edifying um, and enjoyable and do tell your friends about it and do tell your friends about St. Albans Church. And if you're in the area, we'd love to have you come and visit us sometime and join us. So I want to move ahead quickly. I've got a lot of ground to cover today. And we are going to start this series with uh, a look at the foundational books that we use in our worship and devotion here at St. Albans Church. So this will take us through the next three weeks uh, we will look at the Book of Common Prayer, which is what we're going to look at today. And then we will look at the authorized version of Scripture next week. And then the week after, we will look at our 1940 hymnal. It'll be a very brief version of the uh, longer Lenten study that some of you may have caught before. So today we are going to be looking at the Book of Common Prayer. So if you have a prayer book, uh, go ahead and pick one up. And let's take a look at this, this book. Now, um, the first thing that we notice, uh, or you've heard me say, this is the 1928 Book of Common Prayer. If you've come to us here at St. Albans from the Episcopal Church, or maybe uh, another uh, Anglican tradition, uh, you'll notice that the prayer book that we use is different from theirs. In the Episcopal Church and, and some recent bodies that have split from her, they use what is called the 1979 Book of Common Prayer. That is different from our prayer book, which is the 1928 Book of Common Prayer. Both were produced by the Episcopal Church, but in the late 70s, when the Episcopal Church adopted the new prayer book, many Anglicans uh, decided to keep using the old one, and we are part of that group of Anglicans. So, if you open it up to the title page, we see that it explains itself as the Book of Common Prayer, an administration of the sacraments and other rites and ceremonies of the Church. So the prayer book contains our worship services, and our sacramental rites that we use in the life of the church, in the life of Christians uh, here in the Anglican tradition and here at St. Albans Church. Um, now, what, where did the prayer book come from? The prayer book was first composed in 1549 by Archbishop Thomas Cranmer uh, in England. He was the Archbishop of Canterbury. Uh, and he, there at the time of the Reformation, uh, different changes were happening in Europe and, and elsewhere. And Archbishop Cranmer wanted to simplify the liturgy of the church and have one book that, was, that could be used by all people, lay and ordained, in the church. Prior to the Book of Common Prayer, uh, clergy had a whole set of books that contained the different rites and ceremonies uh, that she needed for her worship and life. There was the breviary, which was used for the offices of uh, morning and evening prayer and the hours of prayer throughout the day. There was the missal that had the service of Holy Communion. There was the pontifical that had the rite for ordinations and so on and so forth. There were all of these books that were in use, and what Cranmer wanted to do was take all of those books, translate them into the common tongue of the people, smush them down, to use a technical term, 
into one book that everyone could use. And that's where the name comes from. It is called the Book of Common Prayer, that it is uh, used and can be used by everyone, both lay and ordained. So he composed this book using medieval sources, uh, the old Sarum rite that they had used in England, some continental sources and some uh, things that he uh, developed himself. And that's where the prayer book came from. As time went on and the English people uh, spread throughout the world, the empire spread, wherever they went, the church went with them and with the church her prayer book. So each area of the world that was colonized or, or occupied, whichever word you wish to use, by the English uh, used a prayer book, but then eventually as they became independent, uh, they took that prayer book tradition and they made it their own. So we have today in the world a Canadian prayer book, an American prayer book, a Scottish prayer book, a South African prayer book, an Australian prayer book, and on and on. So the, it, it is important to convey that what we are using here and what I'm discussing is the American Book of Common Prayer from 1928. There is an English 28 prayer book, uh, but that is different from ours. I am discussing... An